Okay, so let me recall where we were. So, uh, so the box formula says that the number of plane, the uh, weighted sum of plane, uh, plane partitions inside an A by B by C box, where the weight is the sum of the entries, is given by this wonderful product formula: one minus Q to the I plus Z plus K minus one, minus Q to the I plus Z plus K minus two. That I, J, and K run symmetrically in the ABC. So, very clean, beautiful formula. So, we'll try and prove it. Uh, as I explained last time, uh, or over the last few uh, classes, plane uh, partitions, uh, uh, these kinds of plane partitions can be expressed as a. As a uh, as non intersecting lattice paths. Uh, a of them starting at uh, these points SI and ending at uh, these points EJ, go taking up and right steps. And so if you just wanted to count the number of plane partitions uh, by the LGV theorem, this is given by this uh, determinant, uh, A by A determinant, B plus C, choose B plus A plus C. But we want we want this weight uh, uh, Q to the size of uh, pi. And uh, what this corresponds to is, uh, is the weight, uh, is the area enclosed by uh, this region. Uh, so let me go back to an example that I had uh, done earlier. Uh, which is this plane partition so from lecture 12. So the plane partition is uh, 321110 and this we had, uh, if you remember, encoded it as this sequence of non-intersecting lattice paths where the first path encodes the partition 32. And if you remember, uh, so from what I said just a moment ago, this is the partition consisting of these three boxes in the first row and these two in the second row. Okay, and this partition one zero corresponds to uh, sorry one one corresponds to uh, these two boxes, and this partition one, which is one zero, really corresponds to this uh, box. Okay, so um, so. I've, so what we want to uh, do is to in encode that area, and there's a very nice trick that will allow us to do it. So that's what we want to explain. Okay, so let me recall again. So uh, recall uh, that the path um, Pij in P uh, starts at uh, uh, SI, which is uh, 1 minus I, I minus 1, and ends at C plus 1 minus J. Uh, B plus B plus B. Okay, so that's uh, that's what we look for. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a, a new weight to such a path. Okay, and uh, uh, this is not easily. It's not uh, obvious why this weight works, but uh, you will see uh, when we go through the proof. So let W of Pij equal to Q to the I times I minus J. Uh, oh, okay, so I need to define that. So definition. 
uh, the minimal path from SI to EJ is the path is the one that first um, that consists of all uh, up steps initially followed by all right steps. Right, so that's what I said uh, a moment ago. Uh, this is the path that will go first all up and then go all right. So that will correspond to the empty partition. Okay, uh, so this corresponds. Uh, minimal paths correspond to empty partitions. Okay, I need one more. So let area of PIJ be the area of the region. Oh, sorry. Mm. For a path P in PIJ hmm. Sorry, I'm just getting confused about my notation. So let me go back here and make sure. So PIJ is in the notation. Okay, so there's a slight mismatch of intuition. Okay, so let me say path small p. So, uh, oh wait. Okay, uh, so, okay, so let me remind myself of the notation. So, p is a family of uh, lattice path start uh, A of them which start at SI and end at uh, E of pi i where pi is some permutation. Uh, so yeah, then it's okay. Um, sorry about that. Pij is a particular path uh, that starts at uh, That starts at SI and ends at BJ. With the area uh, between uh, enclosed by the path PIJ and the minimal path. From SI to EJ. Okay, so. Uh, in this uh, um, uh, it's the in this example it's the area enclosed by it's this uh, area of this uh, pink shaded region okay so W of Pij is q to the i i minus j times the area of Pij. Okay, so I'm giving this weight uh, uh, to uh, to this path. Okay, to a particular path. Pij. Okay, is that clear?
All right. Um, okay, so now uh, we will prove uh, proof of Okay, so, so first thing we have to do is uh, we have to modify the uh, LGV lemma to account to show that it still works when we take a weight like this. Uh, so that's uh, part of the proof and the rest of the proof is uh, then a determinant value. Okay. So, uh, we need to, oh, we will first modify the proof of the LGB lemma to show that this weighted count can be written as a determinant. OK, so uh, so if you remember the key idea. Uh, the key idea in the LGV proof. Uh, OK. The key idea in the LGV proof was an involution. So if you remember, you had uh, be sure that uh, you know you have two paths that go from uh, uh, S1, S2, uh, E1, E2. So you had these two paths and which intersected. Uh, they could have intersected multiple times in principle. Then uh, you change the path. Uh, you change the uh, two paths from the point of the last intersection. Uh, uh, you you tell let S1 instead of going to E2 go to E1 uh, as follows, and uh, S2 go to E2, and then you these two uh, paths differ only by a transposition. The weight does not change, so the uh, sign therefore changes. Uh, and uh, they cancel each other pairwise. So, so the only paths that remain are non-intersecting paths. I mean, this was the key idea of the proof. And what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, uh, perform a similar involution. So, uh, okay, so let me uh, show you how the involution works. So, um, Okay, so suppose um, suppose two paths uh, P of uh, S one E E one and P of S two E two intersect as follows. Let me, let me go to the graph mode. Okay, so, uh, so let's say here is uh, S2, here is S1, and oh, sorry. One and I'm going to draw two paths. Um, make sure some of the colors. Um, so let me draw this one. Okay. And this 
this goes um, is uh, E1 and this is uh, E2. Okay, so, um, so now uh, for these two parts, let me draw the um, uh, shaded region. So, Okay, so the area of uh, the S1 part uh, is uh, is the part uh, intersecting, I mean, uh, the part, I mean, the, so the area is obtained by the region enclosed, I mean, the area of the region enclosed by uh, the path from S1 to E1 and this blue dotted line is uh, the contribution of uh, w, uh, w of P S1 E1 and the area of the region enclosed by the path from S2 to E2 and this blue dotted line is uh, the weight of P of S2 E2. And uh, so maybe I'll write that down. Um, so Weight of <laughs> weights of the P of S I E I enclosed. Ah, uh, the areas enclosed by um, orange parts and blue mineral parts. Okay, now let me show you uh, the other uh, side of this. Story. So now when we do the evolution, uh, oh, So when we do the involution, something uh, we're going to get different parts. So um, now, uh, oh, maybe I should put on different colors. Okay, no, it doesn't. Matter. I'll change the shade. Lines and maybe uh, now S2 goes to E1, and so I'll have uh, and so I have this part, and I have S1 going to E2. So I have this one and. Uh, Now the weights. So this is the. So this is orange weight of pi, and maybe I should write um, p of. Um, so now. 
e of uh, so three minus i is um, uh, are areas enclosed by orange paths and pink minimal paths. Okay. And this is the involution action. This is the involution. Okay, so now you see that uh, um, there are very different uh, weights included here. So, uh, so I hope this is not too confusing. Uh, here, I mean S1 to E2 is this whole path, and S2 to E1 is this whole path, right? So, we're performing the same involution, and we we are going to show that it uh, works uh, with this uh, non-trivial weight. Okay, that's the idea. So, okay, so so now let us compare what. So we need to see what's going to happen to these uh, area differences. Okay. Uh, so as I said, we perform. On the same involution as in the LGB lemma, and uh, analyze the uh, weight differences. Okay, so since you since the weight is in the exponent, we have to see the difference. This the sum of the blue areas minus the the sum of the pink areas. Okay, you you understand. That. Okay, so let me uh, uh, let me do it schematically. So schem uh, schematically, what's happening? So, So I have uh, uh, S1, S2, uh, E1, uh, E2. So I have uh, all these uh, paths. So let's say this goes like that. This goes like that. Okay. And uh, then let me draw the blue things. So uh, yeah, let's just imagine this. These are the paths. This is right here. So, let's see it. so that's one pink, uh, and the other pink should. So this is S2 to E1, and I want to draw S1 to E2, and that's that. So let me um, number all these uh, regions. So let's say this is one, and so two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So let's see what's happening. So area of from S1 to E1 is. 1 plus 3 plus 6, right? Area of S2 to E2 is uh, 2 plus 3 plus 4. Area of S1 to E2 
is uh, oh sorry what ah s1 to e2 so it's going to go like that and like that so it's 1 plus 3 plus 4 and area of finally s2 to e1 so this will go like so and like so this will be 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 right and so if you take area of uh, sigma area of si to ei minus area of si to e three minus i i plus one to two what will you get so you get one three six two three four and you get one three four two three five six so the only thing that remains is uh, um, minus five So everything cancels except for this uh, this bit over here. Uh, but what is that? So uh, so thus uh, so what is this equal to? So if uh, we let if SI is um, Uh, just a second. Um, yeah. So if SI is uh, um, I one uh, minus I one, I guess. Just a second. Uh, Yeah. So if uh, okay, so if SI uh, sorry. Uh, so mm. right. So it's the uh, So if uh, um, I mean the area is the difference in the x coordinates. I mean the area rectangle is the difference of the uh, x coordinates of the uh, starting points and the difference of the y coordinates of the ending point. So if uh, SI has x coordinate. S1, S2 have x coordinates I1, I2, and E1, E2 have y coordinates J1, J2. This is uh, uh, I. What did I say? So it's uh, I2 my uh, I1 minus I2. Uh, times um, uh, J1 minus J2. Okay. On the other hand, let's compare the weights. Okay. So, so now uh, I have to, uh, I mean, this is the area contribution. What about the remain, this other pre-factor contribution? The other contribution from the weights uh, 
is what? So it's I1 times I1 minus J2 plus I2 I2 minus J2 uh, I2 minus J1 sorry um, minus I1 times I1 minus J1 plus I2 times I2 minus J2. So this is uh, so uh, this is the uh, path going from uh, okay maybe I should do uh, this systematic so let me do it here. So I1 I1 minus J1 I2 minus J2. So this is the path going from uh, S1 to E1. This is S2. And this is uh, S1 to E2. This is S2 to E1. Okay. And now, uh, what is this equal to? So you see, I1 squared will cancel. So I1 squared will cancel. Uh, I2 squared will also cancel. Right? And uh, then you will be left with, uh, uh, so then you will be left with I1 times, uh, you will get a plus J2 over here. So J2 minus J1 plus I2 times, uh, oh, that I should have changed, right? This should be J1, uh, J1 minus J2, which is exactly I1 minus I2 times J1 minus J2. Uh, there is a sign off. Okay, but the sign is off because I, there's this extra minus sign here. So, okay, so these two, uh, these two exactly cancel. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, we have the weight of P from uh, S1 to E1 times uh, weight of P S2 to E2 is equal to weight of P S1 to E2 times weight of the one okay so uh, so the involution from the SUV lemma from the SUV lemma uh, continues to be uh, sign reversing and weight preserving. Okay. Are there any questions about this? Uh, why did we uh, define the weight to include I squared terms since it gets cancelled anyway? Which terms? Sorry? Uh, uh, can you go back to the defi definition of the weight? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, here. Okay. So uh, if we define that as Q bar minus IJ plus area, the calculation would still work out the same, right? Ah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, maybe it's not necessary. Uh, we can check that. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so this seem to work out. Uh, I'm just wondering if there is an overall weight issue because uh, 
here. Uh, this will sometimes be negative, sometimes be positive. But if I just have minus ij, we'll, we'll check it. I, I have written a sage program. It's a good question. Yeah, I've written a sage program and we can check that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. So let me just write down the. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, I'll show you. Okay. Therefore, only NILPs contribute. Uh, uh, oh, right, right, yes. Uh, uh, when, um, right, right, but when I, uh, oh, just, just a second. so, yeah, yeah, so uh, you want to, you want this not to contribute when I equal to J. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Because you you want when uh, when you are taking uh, so when you have uh, when you have the non-intersecting lattice path uh, like so you only want the weight of the area you don't want uh, the other two yeah so that <laughs> yes, great. thanks yeah so uh, and the path from SI to EI has a weight Q to the size of pi i, the partition correspondence, because the uh, j equals i in that other factor will go uh, as one bit. So it's really very clever. Uh, transformation so so the first part of the from this first part of the proof we get uh, that the LHS is a determinant which determinant is that so this is determinant of uh, so Q to the so the IJ entry is what it's I uh, I minus J times what so times the path uh, times the weighted sum of uh, paths going from from uh, EI to SJ. But what is that? Uh, this is uh, like uh, like we did in homework one. This is a uh, uh, a Q binomial coefficient or Gaussian binomial coefficient. So this is. Uh, so this is the path going from, uh, I reminded you at the beginning of today's class. So one minus i, i minus one. So how many uh, right steps you need to take is uh, c minus j plus i. And how many up steps do you need to take? You take b plus j minus i. And if you sum them, you get b plus c. So it's uh, b plus c choose you can take either b plus j minus i right. this is the from homework one um, uh, this, so where i and j run from one to okay so we have this determinant and uh, OK, so now we want to evaluate this. Determinant. Okay, so first let me show you uh, how this determinant looks like. OK, so I wrote this, uh, how this matrix looks like. So, so I wrote this uh, program which will return this matrix. Uh, so I have, one has to be a little careful, you know, with this Sage, uh, sorry, sage. Uh, the i and j indices run from 0 through a minus 1 instead of 1 through a, and so the only place that makes a difference 
is here. So I had to change I to I plus one, otherwise I will run this. Okay, so so I already ran that program. I'm going to again. Uh, and uh, so this is the two by two case, and uh, for that. I showed you a long time ago that the answer is 20, and you can see when you set Q equals one, you get uh, five times two squared. Uh, but you can do other things. So you notice that uh, these are you don't get polynomial entries. Okay, so even in this. Uh, so this is a three by three matrix. You look at the um, you look at the one comma three entry. Uh, even uh, so, I, many of the upper triangular entries will be, will not be uh, uh, polynomials, and this has to do with this i minus j factor. Uh, but yet, the determinant will always be a polynomial. So there's a lot of nice uh, combinatorics going on. Um, so, and we can also see the symmetry uh, from here. Uh, maybe I'll save this. Three, two instead. Now this is a four by four matrix, uh, and the entries are different, as you can see. Um, but uh, if I compute the uh, determinant, uh, so this is, oh, so this works. It says equal. I mean, it doesn't uh, evaluate to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do it again. Let me go after. So you get it. So, yeah, so I mean, you can do all permutations, permutations. You can do this is just a two by two determinant. So, it's really so it works. Um, well, not well, we have not checked it systematically, but oh, I can check it now with the box formula. So I also evaluated that, and here it is again for this. And what I can do is uh, ABC that this minus box product. C factor So I should. It looks like do two different factors. It's the, the problem is it's not factoring this first. Um, this inner factor. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So now let's go about evaluating this problem. Um, So, so first, what we will do is we will take out uh, some um, some factors from the IJS entry. So the IJS entry can be written as. Q to the i i minus j times the product. So this is the b plus c uh, cf binomial coefficient. So this is k equals one to b plus c one minus two to the k divided by product. Um, uh, let's say. Um, L equals one to B plus J minus I minus two to the L and M equals one to uh, C plus I minus J one minus two to the N. Uh, notice that I the 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 denominators uh, cancel out because it's one minus Q to the same. The same number of terms. Okay, so this is exactly that. Now, uh, just like we did for watermelon configurations determinant, we will factor out uh, some terms. Okay, so we now factor out see this this num these factors are the same for every IJ. Right, so this this does not depend on IJ. So I just pull it all out, and here uh, I will pull out the maximum possible uh, powers, so that I get a determinant of uh, something purely involving polynomials. Okay, so factor out terms. Uh, okay, uh, okay. So what am I going to do? So this I'm going to leave. So let me write that. So product k equals one to p plus c or minus two to the k. I take the whole thing out. Now here I have to be a little careful. So here I'm going to factor out uh, okay. so for the first term. I will take out the maximum value of J. So I want to take out which is A, right? This is an A by A matrix. So I'm going to take uh, this A power out. So product um, L equals 1 to B plus A minus I minus 2 to the L. Product M equals 1 to now. Uh, here, uh, so, so in other words, I'm taking out a long columns. Here, the largest term comes when uh, j is 1. So that is c plus i minus 1, uh, 1 minus 2 power i. OK. So I've done that. And uh, so, so the LHS is now this factor times what? I have Q to the I, I minus J. Remember, we have that from before. And now, what do we have extra? So, uh, so over here, I have, uh, I have only up to uh, 
B plus J minus I. So I have to cancel out all the other terms. I have 1 minus Q to the B minus I plus J plus 1. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Times up to 1 minus Q to the B plus A minus I. And over here, I have 1 minus Q to the C plus uh, so I have up to C plus I minus J. Uh, so uh, I have to go one higher than that. So C plus I minus J plus 1 times up to 1 minus Q to the C plus I minus 1. Oops. That's a C. Okay, again, I'll not write it, I'll write it uh, once more, but uh, I'll not write it after that. So, this you have to remember is an A by A determinant. Okay, any questions about this uh, manipulation? Sir, in the denominator. Yeah. So, yes, is, it like, is the I ranging? No, I is fixed, right? So, so here I'm 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 uh, manipulating along columns. So in the jth column, if you see, okay, okay, got it. I have take I have multiplied out by the extra factors, uh, both for this over here and for this over here. Okay. All right. Now let us see. Let let me. Uh, let me write these terms here. Okay, so so let me write this IJ entry a little carefully. Uh, okay, so there's a power of minus one, which I will uh, explain in a second. Then there's a okay. Let me write it, and then we'll I'll explain it. Maybe let me write it all the way. Sure. I have no space. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to write it in the form uh, q power something minus q power something for each uh, term. Actually, so uh, I will write it as q power i minus q power something. Okay, so each of those terms. So uh, I'll have an extra power of 2, which I will also write down and then I'll explain. So c j minus 1 minus j choose 2 plus i i minus a. So I'll explain these terms in a second. But let's now look at these terms. So here I have I'll multiply by q to the i okay for each of these terms. So I will get uh, q to the i minus q to the b plus j plus 1 all the way up to q to the i minus q to the b plus a. Okay, so how many powers of i does that give us? So, uh, mm, okay, so how many terms are these? So, let's just see. So, we, so this goes from j plus 1 up to a. So, this is a minus j terms, right? Uh, and uh, what did I do? Okay. Um, so it should be J minus A. Let me finish the computation. And here I'll also take uh, q to the uh, q to the i outside. Uh, well, so here what I'm doing is I'm uh, uh, multiplying by uh, the um, the other side, and then I'm taking a minus one power. So. Uh, 
let me write that. So I have Q to the I minus Q to the J minus C minus one, all the way up to Q to the I minus Q to the C minus one, a oh, one minus C. Okay, so let us uh, go through that. Okay, so I might have messed this up. Uh, Okay, let us see. So, um, so here you uh, you are taking out a C minus one. Uh, oh, rather, let me take out the C. So, uh, how many terms are here? There are. Uh, this goes from uh, C plus I. Uh, I think J minus one terms are there. Yeah, this has J minus one terms. So uh, for each of them, I have taken out a Q to the C outside, and so I have my, uh, so so that gives me a Q to the minus uh, C over there. Uh, and then I have. Uh, taken these factors out q to the j minus 1 all the way up to 1 so that gives me uh, minus j choose 2 right so so and uh, then i have uh, flipped the sign of these j minus 1 terms to get minus 1 to the j minus 1 so the only thing that is uh, off so far is i think this term i i minus a i think this should be uh, I have taken out a Q to the I, uh, A minus J times, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, I mess up my calculation, I think. Um, okay, just a second. So if I do that, Just do it and then maybe we will we'll see. Uh, okay, it's a long computation and I'm not able to go through it quickly. Okay. All right. So this uh, this gives us a determinant of this form. And uh, now we want to evaluate. So we, we want to evaluate a determinant like this, and there is a, a lemma that will help us, uh, which uh, I want to show you now. Um, okay, so maybe before that, I should just take out the factors. Okay, all right, so let's uh, remove this overall factors. So uh, these terms. Uh, uh, okay, maybe here is the problem. So I want this to be I minus A because I want this term to be depend purely on I. I mean, uh, I can remove along rows or along columns. Uh, Sir, actually, if we include the Q power I into I minus J, also then we'll get the expression that you wrote. Ah, I forgot that, is it? We have the Q power I into I minus J. Oh, that's true. I completely forgot about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Who was that? Yes, I see. Thank you. So if I include that, uh, so what? Yes, then is that correct? So, so J minus I plus I, I minus J. Yeah, let me write that. So then I get a plus IJ and then, ah, thank you. 
perfect thanks sir okay so ij plus ij minus ij yes. okay yeah. okay that saves my life okay so now let's remove the prefactors so uh, we'll remove terms which are constant in i and j we cannot remove any of these terms because uh, i mean we can't remove these factors because they depend on both i and j uh, so let's remove the prefactors. So the oops, sorry. so the prefactors are uh, so along each along the jth column, I'll remove minus one to the j minus one. So I get minus one to the uh, one plus up to a minus one times q to the what? Uh, so uh, I get, um, so this was i times a minus a, uh, sorry, i times uh, i minus a, and the j choose to, okay. So let me be a little careful. Uh, Okay, so let me put the product of i. So, so product i equals 1 to a q power. Uh, so I get uh, uh, See what I've written. So for the ith term, I'll get i times c minus a minus c plus i plus 1 choose 2. Uh, let me understand that. So okay, so right. Um, Confused myself again. Sorry about that. So, um, I minus A So uh, C J minus one will give me J C minus C, and uh, then the sum over J choose two will give me J plus one choose two. Maybe I should have written J instead. And I suppose the minus I A is coming from here. C minus I. Okay, let's uh, let me clarify this uh, later. Then I have times. Okay, so what remains is this determinant, the determinant of these guys, and now we will use a lemma due to Kartenthaler from the 90s. So when when one uh, comes up with uh, determinant evaluations like this it's best to try to generalize it in the in the best way possible and here is this lemma which uh, is kind of uh, the utmost generalization that works for us so let x1 up to xn a2 up to an 
and B2 up to Bn, Bn determinants. Then the determinant of the matrix, n by n matrix whose ijth entries are uh, of the form xi plus an all the way up to xi plus a j plus 1 times xi plus bj all the way up to xi plus b2. So I'm going in descending order in j. Um, uh, or one between i j less than equal to n. This determinant has this beautiful product formula one less than equal to i less than j less than equal to n x i minus x j, the usual van der Mond term times the product which is two less than oh, sorry, two less than equal to i less than or equal to j less than equal to n b i minus a j. So it's a term purely involving the xi's and the other term purely involving the uh, a's and b's. Okay. And uh, what? So I will prove this later. Uh, so let's just assume this for now. Okay. Uh, so what we have? So. Uh, our ijth entry after removing the prefactor is uh, q to the i uh -huh. okay, okay. now i understand So forget that prefactor business. Okay. Now I so now what we'll do is uh, plug in n equal to a. We have an a by a determinant. Replace x i by q i q to the i. A j by minus q to the b plus j, b j by minus q to the minus c plus j plus one. Okay, so so I'll just plug this in here and then we'll come back uh, to get so q to the i sorry minus. minus q to the b plus a up to q to the i minus q to the b plus j plus 1. Right? a j plus 1 is q to, oh, sorry, is minus q to the b plus a plus 1. Right? Uh, times q to the i minus q to the minus c plus j minus 1, right, because of bj, and then uh, q to the i minus q to the minus c plus 1. Because when you put, uh, oops, that's a minus 1. Uh, when you put j equals 2, you get. Okay, and now if we compare with this, uh, plus j plus one, uh, so we get the same thing. Mm. Uh, okay, so just to clarify, so we get exactly the same term as here, minus c plus j minus one, C plus J minus one, right? So we get the same term, uh, but now I am still uh, at a loss for my three factors. Let me move this whole thing. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so let me leave the prefactor for now. I'll just write it. And uh, uh, then we'll, we'll see what to do. Thus, uh, the LHS becomes Product k equals one to b plus c one minus two to k divided by product l equals one to b plus a. P plus A minus I, 1 minus K to the L, product M equals 1 to C minus L minus 1, or C plus L minus C. 1 minus Q per M times uh, minus 1 to the A choose 2, I already argued that, and uh, the remaining terms I will, uh, I will explain next time. I had understood it, but I didn't think this one. Oh, sorry, that's Q to the um, I C minus A minus C plus I plus A. Times this determinant of this term. Okay. And now, uh, okay, so now uh, using, using the lemma, let me just evaluate the determinant. The determinant. becomes and we have a uh, product xi minus xj xi is just q power i so that's easy so this is product 1 less than equal to i less than j less than equal to a q to the i minus q to the j so it's going the wrong way somehow and the other term is product 2 less than equal to i less than or equal to j less than or equal to a and now I have, uh, remember what we had, bi minus aj. bi is uh, this guy and aj is this guy. So uh, bi is minus q to the minus c plus i minus 1. And uh, because the, there's another minus, it becomes a plus, minus q to the b plus j. Okay, now let me simplify this just a little bit. Uh, so I want to take out some powers of Q. Um, okay. I plus one to A and I get, um, okay, so for the first term, uh, for each uh, I, I will uh, I will take uh, uh, a minus i many q to the i terms because so, so let me just explain what I'm doing here. So I have taken out a q to the i for every fixed i there are a minus i many j's. And I have taken those outside. And uh, so I've, I've written this in this. Term. So these two terms give you this, that term. And then I'm going to do a similar manipulation over here. I fix, fix an i from 2 to a. And uh, I will take out q to the minus c plus a minus 1 terms that many times. And how many times is that? Now, uh, 
remember uh, j does include i so uh, i go all the way from i to a but uh, including i so i get a plus 1 minus i this many terms and i have product 2 less than or equal to i less than or equal to j less than or equal to a uh, of 1 minus uh, Okay, so I also have a, a minus sign over here, uh, which I will explain. So I have switched the minus signs uh, over here. So I get Q to the, now this guy comes over this side. So I get B plus C uh, plus J minus I plus 1. And uh, how many uh, signs do I get? I get... Uh, uh, so when i is 2, uh, I get a minus 1 terms uh, like that all the way. So, okay, so let, let's see. So when i is a, I get 1j. When i is uh, a minus 1, I get 2 and so on. So all the way up to a minus 1. Okay. All right. So now we combine everything. So combining everything. We get uh, all right. So this is a minus one to the a choose two. So this is a minus one to the a choose two inside the. I mean, from uh, uh, from the determinant evaluation, and I already had uh, in the prefactor. Uh, where did it go? Here, another minus one to the a choose two, so I get uh, twice a choose two, which is a into a minus one times. What do I have? Power of q. So what is the power of q here? Mm -hmm. um, So let me first uh, uh, take out certain powers. So if this is a minus one plus c minus a minus c plus one. Uh, where did these come from? Just a second. This one from earlier. Horribly confused. Sorry, just give me a second. Um, that power is still there. This power is here. Ah, okay. So, uh, right. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, because these powers only go from 2 to A, I will, uh, so what I've done is taken out those powers and uh, the remaining are over here. So, product I equals 2 to A. And now I have all these uh, earlier factors plus this factor. So, when I equals 1, this was C minus A minus C. Uh, plus 2 choose 2 which is 1 so uh, so I got minus a plus 1 from there uh, and uh, when I equals uh, 1 here I got uh, 1 times a minus 1 that's that uh, and uh, I think I need one. Okay, let me finish writing this. There's one more term which I need to salvage from somewhere. 
So this is Q to the I C minus A minus C plus I plus one choose two. That was from earlier. And this is I A minus A from this term. And uh, minus C plus I minus one times A plus one minus A. Um, okay. Times a big product I goes from one to A. Uh, product K goes from one to B plus C one one minus two by K divided by product L goes from one to A plus B minus I one minus two to B L product M goes from one to C plus I. Minus one, one minus two power m. That's the huge product over here. Times product uh, one less than equal to i less than j less than equal to a minus two power j minus i. This is the latest factors that we obtained. And product two less than equal to i less than equal to j less than equal to a one minus two to the b plus c plus j minus i plus 1. Okay? All right. Uh, so the uh, thing to note is, of course, that this term, uh, this is always positive because either either a or a minus 1 is even, so that goes away. And, you know, these terms cancel that wise. Uh, and what remains is this big fat term. And uh, so what uh, I will show you uh, next time is that this this factor will go away and this so there will be no residual power of Q and uh, this thing will be equal to exactly what we want. Uh, so I need to explain uh, some things to you. So I will, I will do that next time. Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. So this, this part is clear. Okay, so let me go, go, go over that. So we have two factors, right? So uh, one from here when i is 1, so that will give me 1 times a minus 1, that's this term. And the other term is when i equals 1 here, so that's 1 times c minus a minus c plus 1, and that's this term. Okay, so this, this part is explained. I only need to explain to you now this uh, this prefactor okay which i will do next time and i will uh, then finish the proof. okay any questions so far yeah sorry about it i mean, I, I really had understood everything and now i, I got confused uh, okay so let me stop sharing uh, and stop recording